Whale sharks are awesome and I would love to meet one. They are described as gentle giants and are the largest shark. In fact, they are the largest fish found in our seas. On average, they grow 5.5 to 10 meters and weigh 18.7 metric tons. They have the most amazing markings of pale gray or white spots and stripes, which makes them quite beautiful. And each individual has their own unique pattern. They are filter feeders feeding on zooplankton, one of only three species of sharks to do so. The female produces many eggs at around the age of 25, which develop inside of her, and then she gives birth to about 300 live young, although many do not survive. It is thought that whale sharks can live as long as 100 to 150 years. They live in all tropical and warm temperate seas in the open ocean, and are solitary and nomadic. They are known to migrate thousands of miles, but in the summer months, at coastal sites, they form seasonal feeding aggregations. They migrate to nutrient-rich waters near places such as the Yucatan Peninsula, Japan, Honduras, Galapagos and Indonesia. After feeding, they disperse in random directions and completely disappear during winter and spring. In the Southern Bird's Head seascape, found in West Papua, scientists have been tagging whale sharks and they have found that nearly all big aggregations of whale sharks in this region are composed mostly of juvenile and young adult males. Of the 200 individuals recorded, only three have been females. It is believed that whale sharks give birth to roughly equal numbers of males and females, and that the females are just behaving differently, perhaps feeding in more remote areas of the ocean or spending more time at depth. Some whale sharks in the area have been tagged with satellite tags, and you can see from this great map where individuals have traveled to. The whale sharks tagged are all males except for Susie, who was tagged in the summer of 2018. It is hoped that she will allow scientists to find out much more about the females in this area, and even perhaps where they give birth, so that these areas can be protected. Whale shark monitoring is also taking place in the Galapagos Islands, in the Galapagos Marine Reserve. Most sightings of whale sharks are female. It was thought that 90% of them could be pregnant, but blood samples were inconclusive. It has been found that whale sharks, along with other endangered animals such as the leatherback turtles, green turtles, silky sharks and scalloped hammerhead sharks, travel between Galapagos and Coacos Island. Coacos Island National Park, like the Galapagos Islands, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, located 550 kilometres off the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. It is rated by divers as one of the best places in the world to view large pelagic species such as sharks. Between Galapagos Islands and the Cocos Islands, the sharks and turtles follow the Cocos Ridge, an underwater mountain range that species follow to migrate between the two UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The migratory route has been declared a Mission Blue Hope Spot. Hope spots are special places that are scientifically identified as critical to the health of the ocean. The Coacos Galapagos Swimway, an area of approximately 120,000 square kilometres, is an area of ocean rich in biodiversity which follows the Coacos Ridge. Creating this swimway would help protect all the migratory species that use it by reducing illegal fishing activities and conserving fish stocks. Having this protection would really help preserve whale sharks. As recently as May this year, 26 tonnes of shark fins were seized by Hong Kong customs officials inside two shipping containers from Ecuador worth 1.1 million US dollars. And researchers have recently identified that shark fins from the retail market in Hong Kong were originally from the Eastern Pacific, which includes the Galapagos Islands and the Cocos Island. It is partly because of this illegal hunting, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, has listed whale sharks as endangered, which was upgraded from vulnerable in 2016. It is estimated that over the last 75 years, the numbers of whale sharks have more than halved. There are many reasons for this, but the most horrific must be the capture and slaughter of them to make shark fin soup. This is also something which happens to other sharks, such as basking sharks. In Asian countries, shark fin soup is a delicacy, and although it is a protected species, whale sharks are still hunted to be on the menu. It is estimated that as many as 73 million sharks are killed for shark fin soup every year, and this is pushing many species closer to extinction. To get the fin of any shark, the shark is hauled out of the water with its tail up in the air, and the fin is sliced off the living shark, which is then tossed back into the sea. 
They are then unable to swim and pass water over their gills, which means they suffocate and die. That is if they don't first die of blood loss or get eaten by other predators. It has to be one of the most barbaric acts that humans perform to other animals. Their skin is also used to make bags and their oil is sold to companies that make fish oil supplements. Conservation action in India, the Philippines and Taiwan has ended large-scale fishing of whale sharks in these countries. But they continue to be fished in other locations, including southern China and Oman. Although shark fishing has been illegal in US waters since 2000, shark fin soup can still be ordered in some parts of the US, as it is by many Chinese communities elsewhere in the world. With fines and jail sentences being so lenient, there is not much of a deterrent to this lucrative trade. Whale sharks are also accidentally caught in fishing nets as bycatch. This is a particular problem with tuna fishing, as tuna and whale sharks are often present together, and so they are frequently caught in these nets. Other problems include being hit by boats. A study published this year has shown that almost one-fifth of the whale sharks in Western Australia's Ningaloo Reef Marine Park showed major scarring or fin amputations. The number of injured animals had also increased, with injuries recorded during 2012 and 2013 almost double compared to 2011. As whale sharks are migratory, it is difficult to tell whether the sharks were injured within the park or elsewhere. It is also difficult to estimate how many whale sharks are hit by large ocean-going ships and killed, as the ships are unlikely to notice it as hit the shark, and they are negatively buoyant so they sink to the seafloor when they die. Microplastics are another problem for whale sharks, as it is for any filter-feeding megafauna. The microplastics are taken up by the whale shark by accident, as they sieve the water for zooplankton. The zooplankton themselves can also be contaminated, having ingested the microplastics as they feed. Pampai Vendar, East Javais, is a seasonal whale shark feeding ground, and scientists here conducted a study looking at how much microplastic was in the water and whether whale sharks could be ingesting it. It was calculated that whale sharks could be ingesting up to 137 pieces per hour. Currently, Indonesia is ranked as the world's second largest plastic marine debris emitter, although they have recently banned single-use plastic bags, straws and takeaway containers. Much of this plastic ends up in rivers, and researchers found an increase in plastic pollution in the seas around rivers during the rainy season. Cleaning up of the riverbeds before the rainy season would go a long way to help alleviate this problem. Due to whale sharks living a long time, it is thought that bioaccumulation of pollutants over decades could lead to concentrations that alter reproductive fitness and have other adverse health effects on the whale shark, as seen in orcas and indeed in humans. A study published in June this year looked at skin biopsies from 20 whale sharks that aggregated in the Gulf of Tetjura. The site is very close to the port of Djibouti, which is located along one of the busiest shipping areas in the world. The skin biopsies were tested for concentrations of 15 trace elements, DDTs and PCBs. The skin samples were found to have contaminations of arsenic, copper, zinc and selenium that were higher than in previous studies on this species and they exceeded the maximum allowable limits for foodstuffs for chromium, lead, selenium, cadmium and zinc. The concentration of PCBs and DDT was found to be 62% higher than that set by the US Environmental Protection Agency and EU regulations for fish consumption by humans. So it is quite possible that people who eat shark meat are actually consuming vast amounts of toxic chemicals. So is the future bleak for these beautiful creatures? Well, I hope not. And whilst there are people who want to eat them, there are also many people who just want to see them. Ecotourism is a big industry, and inevitably there is some controversy as to whether it is harmful to the wildlife being watched. Research has been carried out into the effects of swimming and diving with whale sharks. In a paper published in August 2018 on whale sharks in the Gulf of Baja California, Mexico, Stress-related behaviours such as vigilance, change of direction, diving and acceleration, which potentially carry energetic cost to the shark, which if combined with the decrease in food intake following the disturbance, could be harmful. The main conclusion from the research was that swimmers should not approach the whale shark if it had stopped feeding when the vessel first approached. This guideline is already in the Mexican guidelines for whale shark watching in Mexico and should be for any responsible whale shark watching company around the world. 
Another issue is that of feeding the whale sharks and how this affects their behaviour. In the Philippines, researchers monitored whale sharks that were being fed by fishermen to lure them into waters where they do not usually aggregate, so that tourists can then go and swim with them. Most individuals stay for a few days or weeks, but nine individuals have become year-round residents. This is highly controversial, and I don't think it can really be classified as ecotourism. With a huge increase in people wanting an encounter with whale sharks, more research needs to be done on the negative impacts on the sharks so that they are adequately protected. So, if like me, you would love to go and swim with whale sharks, please choose who you go with carefully and make sure that they are following all the guidelines so as to keep the whale sharks safe and stress-free. With continued research, monitoring and education, the well-being and protection of these beautiful creatures can be assured and humankind can enjoy seeing them rather than eating them. To help celebrate Shark Week, I've also done another video on the scalloped hammerhead sharks of the Galapagos Islands and the threat that they are under right now from a fleet of Chinese fishing vessels. So look out for this on Friday.